I've got some flaxseed in my teeth. Um, good morning and welcome to uh, another early start. It's just gone 7 a.m. and we're about to do a quite a long drive down towards Bristol area to see Rich at Luigi Moto. He is like the UK specialist of Ducati 916s, uh, 748s, 996s, old school Ducatis basically. They're the guys that know. So I've got the bike in the back. The paint, the bodywork hasn't come back from the paint shop yet, which is a bit disappointing, but anyway, these things happen. So she's naked in the back. And um, yeah, today's the exciting day of whether it's gonna start. I don't know. I mean, hopefully we're gonna get the belts done today, oil change, fluids, and just see what's going on in there. And hopefully we're gonna hear the bike start up and um, fingers crossed this is the this is the most sort of risky day other peripherals like brakes and shocks and stuff I can I can deal with that but I don't want any bad engine stuff that's the bit that scares the shit out of me to be honest so anyway um, I'm gonna hit the road because I'm already a bit late so I will see you down at Rich's okay bye 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 great one bye yeah nice bye right made it down to uh to Rich at Luigi Moto. So I've just unloaded and um, we're gonna go in now and, uh, and see what he thinks of my bike. Hopefully everything's correct and in order. Here we go, look at this. Oh, hello Chris, nice to see you again. You all right, mate? Yeah, very good, very see, good. See, he's got yeah, the yeah, ACF yeah. 50 already. Yeah, I know, well, so we, we, got this, um, we got this 916 SPS in. Uh, how long has it been stood up? Quite a few years? 17 years. 17 so. years. Nearly as old near as, old as I am. I, I know, yeah. it's mad isn't it? So what, what do we reckon then Rich? Well it's come in, it's, it's been stood around for quite a few years. Um, the, 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 the sort of grips have gone all hard and horrible and there's a, we got a bar end missing here. Yeah, I've got one with me actually. It okay. came in a box. So oh, that's good. Yeah, we'll I don't know, that. Yeah, we'll don't know why it's there. Yeah. Um, we're going to start by taking the fuel tank off. I tried to put the key in here yeah. and in all fairness it's drier than an uns... Right, okay, nice. Um, so I've put some lubricant in there, now I can get the key in, and yeah. this could be the first time in many years the cap's <laughs> gonna come off. Wait for the waft, yeah? Okay. Because there is fuel in here, I know there is fuel in there. Doesn't smell that bad, really. No? You know, normally it makes me gag. So that would be, that's fuel of, I mean, this I, this was last written in 2006, so I yeah. don't know what the um, the current fuel regs there. I mean, there's certainly no ethanol in it, which is only no, a good thing. No, it might be a good thing. All the rubber parts in there are probably going to be like half-sucked Pontefract cakes. Right, okay. Um, but we'll take it out and we'll have a look in a minute. Yeah. So that, that's a, a big issue. My dream scenario is to hear this running today. That could be a possibility. Could be. It could be. Fingers crossed. What, if, if the fuel pump doesn't purge up, yeah. I could take a fuel tank off another bike that's in for service. We could pop it on so you can just hear it running. So we yeah. could go on and do the belt. So yeah, so we can just go, look, the, the, the engine internals are in it. Cause you know, I mean, I, I, the, the, the guy I bought it off seems a very trustworthy, lovely bloke. You but could have bought a hollow shell. You never know, no do you? No engine internals. Yeah, and is it a 996 engine? You know, that's the next thing to look we'll at. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> but it, it, right. to, to me, you know, if I take the seat off, yeah, that's definitely 996 SPS. And what and what leads you to that conclusion? The PAECU. Okay, yeah. The wiring loom. Yeah. Um, the aluminium subframe. It's all the, unique. The, the data tool alarm. I'd like to take that off. Let's get that in the. I, I, let's get that in the I, bin. I, I've been in business now. I've been doing this business for over 25 years, and I have never ever fitted an alarm to a bike. No. I've re removed many, many of them. Yeah, they're a pain in the arse, aren't they? Pain in the arse. And this is a original carbon tray, we think? It does look genuine. Okay, I'm that's good. Uh, it, it all looks genuine, it looks great, yeah. Good, you know, good. Well, that's the first sign. You've got the rattly discs. You've got the right they are fork. rattly discs. Are they, is that, are they normally that rattly? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. It's very yeah, the, um, the, the clutch, Master cylinder, the, well, the slave cylinder, I think. Is that the Oberon? That's well, the we, one on that's there. the standard one, but we can get. Would you recommend reconditioning the standard or get an aftermarket jib job? Well, it depends how original you want to keep the bike. As original as possible. I would leave that cylinder on. Yeah. I'm going to take the piston out and I'm going to put a, a new seal in it. Uh, yeah. We use a different seal to Ducati. We use like a, a hydraulic seal in there. So it's, got, it's a quad lip, it's got four sealing surfaces on it and it'll last longer than the original seal. Okay, perfect. Keep, keep it all back to OE. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to be as original as possible. I think the, the bike deserves to be left 
in its original state with all the correct components on it. Absolutely. I do have a little a different EEPROM chip. I don't know if it's I don't know if the correct one's in there for the termies or the I don't know, but I've got the box with me. With we, we could strip that down and have a look. There's a critical setup here, and I can see by this tiny little white plug here. Yeah. Okay. The white plug's never been taken out. We need to pull that plug out and check a, a, a millivolt setting inside this ECU. Okay. It's probably going to be as it left the factory because the plug's never been taken out. Okay. Well, let's do a let's do a deep dive and see. The, the, I mean, the battery was all pissing a load yeah. of acid and fluid, so there is a little bit of speckling. That's hit. normal. Is it normal? Completely normal. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, we have we have an exhaust heat shield missing here. Yes, I've got that in the in the van, but there were, for some reason there was no bolts. Okay. Uh, I think because when I picked it up, he'd put, back in those days, MOT testers were a bit more rigid, so he put the original cans back on to get it MOT'd. Have you got the original cans? I have got the original cans. They're rare as a rare thing. Are they? 50 mil original cans. People used to take them off, probably sold them on eBay, people bought them. Uh, finding a pair of them oh, right, is okay. actually quite hard. Okay, brilliant. Well, I've got, yeah, I've got them. Probably easier to find the Termi tailpipe than the original 50 mil. Right, okay. So yeah, that's a good thing. That's good to know then. And then, um, and, and there's like, is this upgraded? I don't know, this blue cable looks a little out of place, but. Somebody's added um, a slightly larger cable to the starting motor. Okay. Um, and it was probably due to somebody putting a cheap quality battery on. Right. Didn't start very nice. Uh, so they put an extra cable on to try and make it start nice. Right. Um, we could do a modified EEPROM chip with slightly more idle in advance. Okay. Um, obviously, the more idle advance makes it slightly harder to start. But what it does, it 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 actually makes it idle nicer. So they do start nicer. I did hear like you 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 read up about the the, the time that most like all the journos like oh they'd all stall in traffic and yeah. they'd all have this yeah. you know but they're not supposed to be ridden in traffic. This is this is a world superbike homologation machine, right? We can get these idling absolutely perfect. Okay. You know, there, there's no reason for them not to do that. I've had the headlights out. They were a bit foggy. I've done a bit of a clean on those, so they seem all right. But it, it looks pretty good condition, I think. The shock needs pulling apart and new spring and that. But it's great. It's great. So we've got the original tyres on. Yeah. Or something close Two, to 2003, it. those tyres are dated. And the interest, and another good sign. I, I, I hate all this data tag stuff. However, Every single panel has got the same matching number on. So it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So you know it's it's never been down the road or the panel's been repaired. So it's um yeah, it's good. Right, well let's let's okay. get I'll put the kettle on and let's yep. get into it. Okay, good. But but overall signs is we're looking good. Ten out of ten really to start with, yes. Ten out of ten. Yeah. Check it out. Looking forward to this one. Okay, so am I. I'm looking forward to hearing it hearing it go. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Right. There's a bolt wrong here, but we're still Oh hang on, there's a bolt wrong. Yeah. This 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 bolt does not it's not a Ducati bolt. It doesn't belong on doesn't this bike. Right, and we will change it. Oh and the other thing I need is the um some nice uh, uh Zeus fasteners. Yeah. Because I've got silver ones and some of them are really rusty. Well, you can only buy silver ones now. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, you, cannot, you can no longer buy the gold ones. Uh. So what I do, I buy the silver ones and I put them in my little passivating pot. Yes. I take them over to the passivators and they come back gold. Okay, perfect. So, well, we'll, we'll passivate some of those. Right, I'm going to get the kettle on. You get a kettle on. Well, we're just going to see if it actually primes because our biggest issue is uh, thinking yeah, about the I fuel pump. Come on then. But, yeah, Magic. Is that a positive noise? Positive noise. That's I'll the do. positive noise. Right. But this all looks normal in here, so I suppose that's. That's yeah, not bad, Nick, to be fair. Yeah. I've seen like where the air filters and the things they break up, and then obviously then you get like all sorts of foam. Because there's some, there. yeah, there's some weird, it almost looks like that stuff you put those fake plants in. Yes, that is exactly what it like, literally, because it's like, yeah, again, people don't, because they're a pain in the ass to change, people don't change them. And obviously all the foam just gets off because the air rushing through sucks all the particles of like foam. Right. Because the air filter is the air filters in, in are there. in these in these tubes, yeah, yeah. right? Have you got those in stock? Have you? Yeah, yeah, we've got them. Might might be worth. Well, we'll have a look at them in a minute, I suppose. Oh yes, perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Original air box. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So you've basically just never seen one that looks that good. This air box is in such good condition. The um the. The coating they put on it isn't very UV stable. Yeah. And what happens, it fades. And uh, you can just see the inside starting to fade. 
but the outside normally fades first and it becomes it becomes almost see-through. Yeah, like the mug guards. You like the front mug guard, the front mug guards are classic. The other nice thing to see is the, um, certainly on the vertical head we can see here, um, the stamping on the top of the head, T, T1. Yeah. And that stamping on the head donates which camshafts has got in it. So you've got the okay. T1 camshafts in the 996 head, basically. And is that, what, a titanium cam, no, camshaft no. or something? It's just the code. It's just the code number for the camshaft. So it's basically a 996 camshaft used in the SPS model. Right. What have you seen? Okay, well, typical of 916s of the era. Um, I'm going to take this off and we're going to do some checks. The seals go in here, which yours obviously yep. has, as you can see. These little, these little rose joints here, they come loose. Yours, they look okay, but they're probably... They're, we'll, we'll take it off and clean them and check them. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's been here with the, uh, a worn-out Allen key and Lovely. Po possibly done a little bit of damage to a screw. So we'll address that. And the side stands fall off. So we're just going to check this now. I'll pull that down. Oh, Christ, look, he's loose. Yeah, here we go. Can, oh, yeah, can, yeah, you, yeah. can you see it moving? I can see it, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is typical of this year of bike. Okay. Um, the side stand comes loose. I actually lost one on my 748 SP. Right, it just fell off. It just fell off. I'm going down the road. I thought, well, what's that noise? And the, the, the side stand sort of hanging down, right. making a noise. They never got checked at the main dealers. This okay. is the problem. And it was only it was only really the, the owners that knew about these things because they were getting all these problems. And 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 there's like what about hubs and stuff? Yeah, uh, there's yeah. there's all sorts of seizing sort of stuff in there. But it, it, she looks quite juicy. I mean, it, you know. It looks good. Um, we, we get a lot of bikes come in and the the chain, the gap here, is diminished. So you know damn well that the hub's upside down. So what people do, they adjust the chain. Ah. And, the, and it flops over, and uh, we had one, uh, ex one experience where a, a mechanic had cut the chain guard off because he said somebody's fitted it wrong, but all it was was actually 180 out on the hub. Wow. And the guy came in in tears, and his, somebody had cut his beautiful carbon fibre hugger in half yeah. because he said whoever fitted the chain did it wrong. But Spe speaking of carbon fibre huggers, did this model come with uh, the top part? No. It no. didn't? It, it ah. came with this with this carbon fiber chain guard. And is that why all the springs get absolutely yes. rogered? Yes. Okay, that's and interesting, because I was, I was thinking, oh, I need, to get, I need to find one of those. How am I gonna find one of those? Bloody, you know, rare. And you also had a paddock stand. And yeah, I think, don't have that. I think you had a red cover. Those paddock stands are... But I was looking at one, 400 quid on eBay. Yeah. I might, I might have a couple. Like, okay, well, I'm sorry, sorry, 200, 100 quid on eBay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is all normal from the fairing. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, normally there's no paint left on there with the, the, the fairing just, you get a bit of localised chaffing yeah, from the we've fairing. All, we've all had a bit of localised chaffing, haven't we? I had, I had we? a bit of localised chaffing this weekend. Yeah. I, was, I was racing at Pembrey. And, right. uh, forks are good. And discs, these are the, the wobbly snowflake rattlers. You got you got the um, the Brembo floaty discs on here. And these are a uh, people go mad for these on the internet. They're they're, they're they? quite sought after. Yeah. Uh, they were they were quite popular in the day. Um, the the wear isn't this. The wear is this one here. Right. And I they are they're pretty good to be honest. Okay. You know, they've not so, had a hard life. Yeah, it's good quality cast iron. Yeah. All oh, right, so they're actually cast iron. The whole thing is a solid iron. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, but this is aluminium. These bobbins are hard, um, Urgul hardened aluminium made by Brembo. It's, it's a good product, but it's a little bit outdated now. Mm. Check the date on that. Oh, look at that fuel pump. O2, last time it was done. Oh. Just, just so it, it has massive been done has during been done. its life, yeah. Once at least. So what? So what's? So that's a fuel filter, is it? Fuel filter. They typically bloat along the fuel yeah. lines and stuff like that. And obviously, because it's three bar pressure system, pretty much causes problems with because obviously the the pipes pop. This one is mainly the problem because of the bend in it and it, it splits. And the more modern the fuel, the more problems you yes, get. Yeah, right? absolutely. Much. Like yeah. Thing if that had modern fuel in it, that it, that would be like that Jelly. would be like. It's, it's madness, isn't it? And it's all for the sake of the environment. Oh, you need modern fuels, but if you've got to replace all of these parts, what's that for the environment? It's ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. Crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And, it, and inside the tank... Doesn't look bad, to be fair. It's, 
Is they normally black coated in there? Yeah, yeah. On, the, on this year they were black coated, hmm. uh, but not down in the seam here. So you get beads of water in there through the cap. Right. And it rusts the tank out on this seam, basically. Yeah, on the bottom, okay. Yeah. Like putting your hand in there, that's pretty clean to be fair. We feel alright? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to no, get my hands No major dirty. crustaceans. No major crustaceans, we don't like that. Excellent, okay. And and you said that this this sort of like a speckle peppering here is, is normal. Is that That's corrosion from the, the battery gases, is it, do you think? Uh, I would probably say that somebody's kept this on an Optimate. Yeah. Now, the, the acid battery, they, they just create little specks of acid. Yeah, you know, they it just vent. spits. It's supposed to vent out of here, but if that wasn't connected, you know, you get drip. I mean, the here. battery was. I mean, there was all sorts of white yeah. furry shit on it. I, I took it out. And I've had incidents where people have had their batteries on charge for five years. It's still got fuel in it, and that fuel will eventually drain away. You know, right. it, it doesn't last forever. And this is. This doesn't look very Ducati esque, is that? It is. All right. It, okay. Yeah, it's typical. Um, on an earlier one, they didn't have this. Um, this heat sink, and they had a, a Ducati um, regulator rectifier, and a lot of the early bikes actually caught fire. Right, nice. Which was nice. That's a classic Italian trait, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're riding along on your beautiful new 916, and woof, woof, off you the, go. The back brake's locked up because you got not because you haven't got the right free play here. So we may need to address that. Yeah. Uh, the side stand falls off. Yeah. And then um, just as you're halfway home, the bike catches fire. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's the joy of ownership, right? Gets your underpants a bit hot. <laughs> I mean, we need to get rid of this alarm, don't we? I don't know what's going to happen with that I, when we turn it on. I mean... If, if we have a good day, they, Ducati actually made a plug and play alarm. Right, okay. So something you could just unplug, disconnect and remove. Um, right. I've only ever seen one before and it was like, ooh, that was easy. So if this is plug and play, we could disconnect it and get rid of it and boom, Bob's your Right, well, I mean, it doesn't sound like a particularly good alarm, does it? Uh, I mean, um, oh, how do we disable this alarm, my fellow thief? Just well, unplug it. Th there's a plug it. here, mate. You can just pull it out. All right, perfect. Well, here's part of the alarm here. I'm going to unplug that one, all right? Right. I'm going to unplug that one. This is part of our alarm. Right, and then just reconnect and all that. And all I do is reconnect, uh, you know, give it a little tug in a minute and, and recon <laughs> reconnect that one to there. And, um, See what happens. I think we're done, yeah, yeah. Oh, and what about, you mentioned off camera the, 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 the sticky pad is a bit different on the old... Yeah, uh, the, 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 they, they generally use a, a, a little bit of sticky, and, I mean, that, and that, that is actually um, solid silver flat pack. Oh, is it? It's, it's got a little hallmark on it. I mean, some, some of them don't even come with that though, do they? Some well, of them... the early ones, they didn't have a plaque at all, so the 916 SP, no plaque. Right, well, let's get into it. Okay, no, it's good and genuine. Good, good. All right, that's good. Right, what's this uh, phenomenon then? Well, back in the old days, yeah. what happened, um, Ducati, this, this particular model, and 748s, went through a phase of timing belt snapping. Okay. And everybody says, oh, you need the Kevlar belts. Well, the belts were already Kevlar, but what they did, they changed the colour of the Kevlar from white to red. And uh, a lot of the early bikes that went wrong was actually the fault of the mechanic. Nothing wrong with the timing belt. These timing belts have been used for years before the 916 came out. And there was never a problem with them snapping back in the old days. So why all of a sudden, in about 95, 96, 97, did the timing belt start snapping? Hmm. And it makes you ask the question, doesn't it? And um, I can probably answer that. Probably okay. the first time it's ever been on film ever. Go on. And this is my opinion. The exclusive. The exclusive. Um, it does say in the manual, if anybody's ever read the workshop manual for a 916 Ducati, but the adjustab adjustable tensioner, which is this roller here, yeah. has to be set anti-clockwise. I'm going to show you a phenomenon now. It probably won't be exact on this model, but if I turn the pulley the wrong way, you can see the belts go exceedingly slack. Okay, now I'm trying to get a good... Okay, uh... so this is correct. Where, where am I looking for the slackness? Here? Well, then, yeah, anyway, just watch, yeah. watch the belt okay, yeah. relax. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wind the yeah. belt off, okay? Yeah. And I'm gonna wind it back into what the workshop manual is with a big red X, okay? Yeah. Now if you look at this gap here, okay? Okay, the the gap is diminished immensely. Mm -hmm. And on certainly on the 748, if I did that with the 748, the belts will be touching each other. Right. Okay, so this pulley can only be adjusted this way, and the gap gets bigger. Okay. Okay. If I do it this way, the gap gets smaller, and especially if it's over tightened, 
a little bit of whip in that belt. Yeah. And they touch and then they break. Right. And that's the end of it. So I'm going to take that wheel off there and just pull the belt off. And, th and this is all so important because these bikes have desmodromic valves, right? So this is, yeah. uh, that's, that's what will cause a detonation inside. So where the bike's been stood up for quite a few yeah. years, it's, it's actually taken on the shape of the, the, the pulleys. Yeah, looks um, like an inverted penis, actually. It, it could be, actually, yeah. Rule of thumb in the Luigi Moto camp, if there's no galling, okay, on the rocker, yeah. I could feel it there. Um, you can feel the lead in and the lead out. Yeah. And all right, you, you can't look inside this sealed engine, but um, by the feel of it, everything's good. Okay. I can study the oil. Yeah. And I can see if there's any part particles. Oh, and we're going to drop that out shortly, are we? We're going to drop gonna... the oil out, and I'm going to be checking for um, little bit little flakes of chrome. Yeah. That's going to give me an indication on the rocker. Like, like blood in the urine. It's exactly, it's, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a biopsy yeah. for a Ducati. Um, what we found then? Well, I'm, I'm turning the engine in the wrong direction. So if, if, I, if I go in the correct direction, we can, hear, we can hear a little clutch ring basically. Yeah. Okay, if I go in, if I go in the wrong direction, if Lee just is, is quiet for two minutes, you, you can hear the starter sprag assembly and it might be it might be on its way out but it might be recoverable by just taking it out changing the garter spring in it cleaning it up putting it back in the plan today is to put the belts on put the tank on and run it up and listen to the starter sprag because it won't repair itself yeah it's all about it's all about feeling noise you know, the, the, these bikes are put together with feeling at the end of the day. It might sound really stupid, but no. you know, they're, they're, they're massaged into life. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we do. So, slave cylinder coming out. It's basically, it's just a big, like, piston behind there, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, look at that. Crusty. Crusty. All right, so back to belts. Back, back to belts then, Chris. I've, um, I've just loosely put the belts on. And uh, if, if you look at the yellow marks, I've, I've made it easy for the camera. So basically we've got the cross shaft lining mm. up with the, the groove in the primary cover. Okay, yeah. Here. And as you saw earlier, it also lines up with a little red dot in the, in the glass window on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So we know that that one's in the correct orientation. The vertical cylinder on the Desmo Quattro engines, both camshafts, the, the timing marks, they both go straight up. And on the front cylinder, this, this, opening cam here that goes straight up and the exhaust cam on here goes straight down that's our timing mark set if you're unsure if you're doing the belts at home yeah. i'm going to i'm going to give them everybody a little tip now okay and uh i want fiver off everybody though okay fine yeah if yeah. anybody ever uses this yeah but i so, take one pound commission pound commission on it i'll, I'll, I'll have the four <laughs> you have the pound okay yeah that's fine we'll be, yeah yeah we'll yeah. Be millionaires after yeah we would be rodders we? yeah okay what we're going to do we're, we're going to count the teeth if you're unsure about this engine, uh, what, all you've got to do is count the teeth between the yellow marks, okay? And I'm pretty sure it's 13. One, two, 12, 13. And the front cylinder, without looking in the book, I'm pretty sure it's 22. One, two, three, four. 21, 22. There you go, he's right. So 13, 22 is the magic figure. And then what we need to do, and, and all of the, and where you've marked that, they've all got a little yellow, a little here, like a dent, a little marker in the thing. Oh, there, there's your yeah. timing mark on the casting. Ah, there. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I could mark that up as well, which is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put a little paint mark on there for your yeah. camera. There, got you. Yeah, and there, look, there. Okay, so they do kind of make it easy for you, ish. The, the, the rules are there. It's not that bad. So what we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to go over the other side, and we're going to. We're going to spin the engine over a couple of rotations. And the reason we're doing that is because the pulleys are barrel shaped. And what they do, they self-center the timing belt. So we got the turning tool in. And basically I'm turning the engine over. So the, the belts should have self-centered on the barrel shaped pulleys. As a double check, I can... Um, I can check my work again by lining up the pulleys. Wow. And now, it's only now that I can retension the belts. Right, okay. 
engine. Remembering what I said before about the correct orientation of the adjustable pulley. Yeah. I'm going to loosen that one slightly. I'm going to use a screwdriver on here because it makes my life easy. And the belt tension wants to be not too loose, yeah. but also not too tight. So I use this casting line yeah. as, a, as a guide with my thumb. Obviously, my thumb's quite small. You get a guy with a big thumb, yeah. and he's going to have a different, a different type of pressure. So I would probably say that that tension is pretty much how I would like it. Okay. I'm going to tighten that new nut up there, and that's pretty much it. Okay. For all the people out there who might go, oh, that loose, that's too loose, it's too tight. I can assure you, when this engine warms up, that belt will go bowstring tight. Right. So you need a slight bit of movement. Yeah, internet, just shush. Yeah. Bloody internet. Listen to me, I earn a living out of this. Uh, that's how I like to do it. Yeah. I am the head chef at the end of the day. <laughs> you and are. I say to people, if you don't like my cooking, there's plenty of other restaurants to go to. But there aren't though, are there? There's not. <laughs> Best pizza in all of Bristol. Okay. Gonna spurtage. So, now we're gonna drain the oil. I've ascertained that we just put the battery on, turn the engine over. The starter sprag is actually quite healthy at okay. the moment. Okay, that's good. So, I'm gonna drain the oil out and we're just gonna have a little bit of a look at the oil, study the oil, see what if there's any bits in there. Okay, now, so we don't want bits, do we? We don't want bits, no. If this oil comes out super clean, um, something you put your chips in, Mm. We're going to be laughing. So, number one is a magnet here. Okay, so I'm going to let the oil go. That's mm. it. On the magnet, zoom in on that. That is looking quite good. Yeah, it looks all right to me. It's not bad. If, if you've got any little metallic fragments on there, that will be from the starter sprag because okay. it's, a, it's the only two pieces that are in the engine that are metal to metal. Right, okay. Um, big end shells are white metal. Okay, and that would show up as um, different fragments. Um, we're going to pull the strainer out now, and that's going to tell another story. Okay. So part of the Luigi Moto service is to pull that out, study it, see what's on there. That is pretty damn good, to be honest. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to pull the strainer out. I've pre-undone that. Like a tea strainer. It's, it's, very, it's like a tea strainer. And this one tells the story now. Okay. Okay. So what we don't, this, this one's going to have some particles on it. Now these, these little pieces of grey material are three bond sealer. Okay. And there's no gaskets in this engine. It's all glued together basically. Okay. And that is just remains of the sealer where it's glued together. If we had copper particles in there, it would be bits of big end material. So, so we're good. We're good. If we had flakes of chrome in there, Mm -hmm. That would come from the rockers, and that's a wear area on this engine. So I would say that was pretty damn good. That is exceptional. 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 Top marks. Yes. yes. Good. Yes. Yeah, I, I think you bought a good one there. So look, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're away. We're flying away. We're all good. We're all good. And um, yeah, then this, this, this handsome young man turned up. So oh, yeah. it's probably what we'll go to shit now. But, uh, yeah. I've been here all day, actually. Um, so yeah, clutch basket is a bit worn, but we're going to make this serviceable. Um, repack the plates. Right, so we've had a little uh, throttle body clean up, air box clean up, put some air filters in here, which are actually inside these snorkels. Uh, got a new battery on, uh, the alarm is off, it's over there, dying. We are going to put a little trickle of fuel in here, are we? Is that what we're yeah. going to do? Yeah. Temperature gauge was cracked. I had a replacement one, so that's in there now. And we are cooking on gas, aren't we, really? Yeah, I think we're, we're nearly ready for we're, the fire up. We're almost ready for a startup. So um, I'll go and get my nice boom microphone and get ready for the sounds of thunder. You keep telling me how many years it's been stood, but it's quite a while, isn't it? 17 years 17 without years. a spark. No sparking. Um, the tank's been serviced. We put the tank on. Let's build some fuel pressure up. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, so we've got a little... Okay, so... Little rumble. We're ready. We're ready? If, if you listen to the pump... Yeah. It's quite faint. Okay. So we've got a bit of fuel pressure. This is it then. Yeah, nothing, we're primed. Nothing's been pressed before. Okay, shall I take this 
bit flammable rags off there? Yes, just in case. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god! Round one. Oh, the fuel pressure. Uh, that, okay, that's take one. We'll let, we'll let it build. You know, we'll let it build. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, there, there, there is a, there is a problem. There could, could be, be. potential yeah. problem. Yeah. Right. When a bike's been stood this long, the injectors stick. Also, valve seat. Yeah. Triple eight. Rust on. It could be rust on the valve seats where the bike's been parked up somewhere damp, and it's got no compression. And we've not done a compression test on it yet. Yeah. Okay. So it, it sounded like. I mean, it sounded good. But it sounded not, good. If it's, if it's not sealing correctly, then you. It's it's new cigar, it's yeah. Let's try again. Let's try again. We're, we're going to start. Come on. Well, we've raised I think four. it just needs some. Top up the oil, make sure we've got no oil leaks, and then we'll resume. As well, well, high fives! High fives! High five! High five! Very nice! High five! Very nice! <laughs> yeah! Very nice! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Monumental, wasn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Monu bloody mental. Right, well, so what have what, what, what we done? So, um, we've had all the pistons out of the calipers. Yeah. And um, um, clean them up. There's, there's one of the pistons, they're all in good nick. And what we're, what we're trying to do is get all the old fluid out from the back of the piston. Because what happens is, people change the brake fluid, but they don't actually get out the last remainder, which is in behind here. That's the contaminated fluid, and that's the fluid that's going to boil again. So you could have new fluid in your line. All the contaminated fluid is still there. It's so imperative that you get that out. On. Fans on, that's good. The fan fine. works, that's good. The new temperature gauge without the cracks on. Oh. And what a sound from this beautiful, beautiful bike. Yeah. I mean, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? It even smells nice. It, it does even smell nice. Right then, so we're uh, we're all done, and. Um, I'm I'm so happy. I'm so happy that this is all now approved like running perfect has had it's had the best eyes in the country on this and it, yeah I, I'm confident to be able to ride it it's basically ready to be ridden I just need to wait for the paint to come back from the from the nose uh, and maybe put some new tires on it and then and then we're 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 ready I think fingers crossed 
Um, but there's loads of little things which I can do over the forthcoming years of like, you know, sorting out these little rusty clips and I can I can do that as I go. Um, but but we're, yeah, I mean, fingers crossed, um, way ahead of where I thought I would be when someone said, do you want to take a risk on a barn find bike that's been sat here for 17 years? Um, whether by luck or judgment, it's managed to survive really, really well. Um, I mean, Rich was just saying, yes, it's really, really good condition. So well done, well done, Barry and Paul, um, who contacted me, thank you. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll see this being ridden very, very shortly. Oh, and also, of course, a massive thanks to Rich at, and the team at Luigi Moto. I'm looking for a logo. If honestly, this is this is it. If you need anything old Ducati, this is the place to come. So, yeah, massive, massive thanks to Rich. All right, bye.